Welcome to Center Stage. My name is Mark Gordon. On this program, we're going to talk with internationally acclaimed photographer Henry Lutweiler. His work has appeared in the New York Times Magazine, Vogue, Esquire, and Vanity Fair. Prior to Michael Jackson's death, Henry Lutweiler photographed crates of artifacts removed from Jackson's Neverland Ranch. The resulting series of photographs are featured in the book, Neverland Lost, a portrait of Michael Jackson. How did it start out for you? Uh, I was very, very stubborn. I wanted to get into photography through the best school in Switzerland, and uh, they kind of told me to forget about it. Uh, I failed the exam twice, and I opened a little photo studio out of revenge in, in Switzerland, photographing, you know, cheese, chocolate, and watches. And uh, <laughs> the trifecta, <laughs> uh, you know, hey man, come on, cheese, chocolate, and uh, watches, absolutely. You then gotta I, toss in some wine though, just to <laughs> kind of go with the cheese and the chocolate, absolutely. And 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 then you know, I turned the whole thing around and thought, well, you know, bikinis are way more sexy than you know, Swiss chocolate and watches and cheese, and uh, you know, and then celebrities, and here we are with Neverland Lost. When I started this project, it was many, many years ago, actually, with a book um, on Elvis Presley. And I did the same exercise with the Presleys. And I realized that we discover much more looking at objects than actually portraying people. There's always a hidden side. There's always, you know, the inside of a jacket. There's the, the size of someone's shoes, uh, the name of Michael on the bottom of his, uh, you know, ballet shoes. Nobody ever saw this. Uh, I believe that it makes Michael maybe a little bit more human to us. It gives him a different side. It shows um, details we have never seen. And um, I was very sad when I was photographing it. And I hope that uh, a lot of people will feel the same. I photographed um, Michael's belongings, of course, before he passed away in February or nine, and again in April or nine. And uh, you know, it's very sad that we lost him. Mm -hmm. That's uh, how we came up with the name for the book, uh, Neverland Lost. I was a big fan of Michael. Back in the 80s, I was dancing on Michael Jackson. So for me, it was almost like celebrating his life. And on the other hand, I was thinking, you know, the young Michael Jackson had no real childhood. I, in my opinion, he was a performing artist at age five. At some point, uh, he created his childhood again with Neverland. And he lost his childhood again. So. That's when the sadness started to happen. How would I feel if I would have had a short childhood and then would have built my childhood again and enjoy it and I would lose it yet all over again? I think that's tragic. I um, had the idea after I did uh, Graceland, I wanted to photograph Neverland. And of course, Neverland was impossible to get access to. And I heard uh, that the objects were going on sale and thought that this maybe would be a good opportunity um, to try and shop the idea with the magazine and maybe see if they had a journalistic approach to it. And a magazine called Portfolio, a Condé Nast magazine said, absolutely, Henry, go for it. We're very interested and uh, see what you can get. And we got lucky and uh, got access and brought the pictures back. And you know, I have been working for probably seven years now on uh, compiling my heroes' artifacts. And in reality, the whole goal was to probably try and photograph the famous white glove. I just got better access and Michael Jackson passed a month later. And then many, many, many months later, at some point, uh, probably the best art publisher in the world 
called me on my mobile and said, hey, I heard you have this. Uh, do you want to make a book? Uh, Gerhard Steidl in Germany. And this is how the book came about. And afterward, this is how the show went up. And um, I think the Benjamin Shannon of MMB were fantastic and uh, curated an unbelie- unbelievable show. In, in some ways, do you think you walk a fine line um, with with taking photographs like this and releasing it? Because in some ways, it people are kind of drawn to this because of of just the sensationalistic aspect of it. It's not. In my opinion, as far as uh, I'm concerned, it's not sensationalism. Uh, it's definitely archaeology. I mean, I did it in the traditional archaeological sense of photography. It's research. And I thought, nowadays we know everything on everyone. Uh, but when you really, really think about it, do you know... Or have you ever seen Alfred Hitchcock's last British passport before he became a U.S. citizen? Or we all know about Andy Warhol's work. Have we ever really looked at his paintbrushes? And so I really think that the whole project is archaeology. And and how all this came about is I could have been 60 instead of 50. My mom made my father wait 10 years. And so all my heroes had passed away. And uh, Michael Jackson, when I photographed his object, had not passed away, but he was definitely one of my heroes. And there was no way uh, to meet him and no way to photograph him. So that's how it all came about. Tell me what this experience has meant to you, putting this book together. Well... I never wanted to have my name on a book. I, I'm a, you know, I'm a gun for hire. I did many books for other people, but never with my name on the cover. Um, I always considered I'm a magazine photographer. At the end of, you know, on Monday it becomes fish wrap. And when I was given the opportunity to do this with the best uh, publisher in the world, it was exciting. Um, you know, my father was a printer, my grandfather was a printer, so I went back to Europe and spent time at the printers with the rumbling floors and the smell of ink, and it, it just felt like back home. And the fun thing is that Gerhard Steidl calls his company Steidlville, so it's Steidl's town, and it's a family. They make you feel like a family. Many, many of my colleagues have been published by him. It was absolutely thrilling. It's a beautiful, beautiful exercise in, I mean, it's a humble exercise. He's the master. I just gave him, you know, the images. Thanks for tuning in. Just a reminder, you can hear Center Stage live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on KXLU, Los Angeles, 88.9 FM. Also streaming live on the internet at kxlu.com. If you have any questions or comments about the show, we'd love to hear from you. Send me an email. The address is mark at stageandscreen.com. Until next time, this is Mark Gordon, and I'll see you center stage.